bus needs to be honored. Why have all the cars of today become so generic? Why? No, we need to change everyone. We need to include something different. We need the bus to be found. Hello everyone! Alright, so today I'm going to talk to you all about a topic that's been in my mind for quite a long time. In fact, I covered this topic one year ago. It's about a particular bus that goes by the name the Citroën U55 Citirama. Well, U55 Citirama. Basically, I covered the topic last year. There's some new information I discovered about this bus and I believe I found the answer as to why there's not much information being mentioned about these buses and why they seemingly vanished from the public in thin air. But before I come down to talking about the U55 Citirama, I have to tell you all First, about the U55 Citirama itself, before I come down to the new information, and which I <clears throat> found out through my investigation. Yes, yes, everyone, as you can tell, this investigation was, I think, three hours. I went all over the internet, I looked everywhere at many sources possible, uh, trying to find out some more information about this bus. But first, let's get down to talking about the bus, okay? Let's talk about the background. The Citroën U55 Citirama bus was a bus built in the 1950s. It was built by a group that goes by the name Surus. 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 Kurus. I'm not sure how it's supposed to be pronounced, but when I first saw the, the company name, I instantly thought of Circus. Here's a very important thing I established last time. Surus, okay, Citroën did not build this bus. Surus was the one that actually built the bus and they were responsible for the bodyworks of this bus. City Rama in no ways was responsible for building this bus. Instead, they were the ones that gave Surus the task of building this bus. They were the buyer of this bus because City Rama was the company that operated these buses in Paris. Uh, and Surus was responsible for building the bodyworks. They were responsible for basically bringing the bus to life. All Citroën did was provided the chassis and the wheels for the bus. So, as you can tell everyone, this was quite an interesting collaboration for such a nice bus. Uh, and it's ironic it was released in the late 50s because around the 50s, well, 1955 was when the first ever Citroën DS was uh, rolled out. So, I'm hypothesizing somewhere that the design of the bus was somewhat an, an inspiration from the Citroën DS. But that's just my hypothesis. I may be wrong because uh, the only country in the world, the only place in the world where there were fancy cars and fancy buses with really interesting fins at the front and all those uh, styles, rocket styles, that's the word, space age influence, was in North America. I know in North America there were lots of fancy trucks and fancy cars, uh, mainly from Cadillac and Lincoln, but then it all changed in the 70s, it all became more boxy and everything. But I have read many sources discussing about this bus. Many sources talk about how this bus was very interesting, it looked space age. In fact, uh, it was very interesting because when you sat inside of it, you'd have those earphones which would translate you in many different languages some information about Paris. Now, I do not know the veracity of this information. But many sources are adamant about it, or, or if not adamant, many sources have actually mentioned it, so I believe this should be true. So basically what you do is just sit in the passenger seat, you'd have earphones which would translate to you some information about Paris. That's right, so the Citroën U55 Citirama was indeed a glorious buzz. Now the question that remained for from my last video was that is there any that is still alive or is there any that is somewhere to be found because I personally am shocked about how it's not preserved in a museum in fact the French don't even take pride in it but then I guess this is a public transport or, or at least it was a public transport at that time so who would see it as a national pride to have a public transport vehicle I mean what's there to be so proud of it's just an A to B machine that's what people would have thought but I'm interested in it! Why wouldn't anyone tell me anything? Now, I believe I know the reason why we don't hear anymore about these buses and why they vanished very quickly from the public. Why is there no information being mentioned about these buses? So here's what I know. If you look carefully at the pictures of those buses in the 1980s, 
you will notice they have a very gray tone to them. They have a gray color to them. They look, in, if, because if you look at pictures of them in the 50s and 60s, they, they are actually bright, like they're like silver. They're like made of tin or something. They look very, they look brand new or something. But the later you go, like the 1980s or 1970s or late 70s, the more you actually start to realize they have a dark gray or they're just grayish or something. That's something I noticed about the body color. And th that's a good implication that the body color was in fact wearing away. Another reason why I believe they vanished very quickly from public is because of the material they were built with. If you look carefully at those buses, they look gorgeous, but the quality and the material which they were made of looked as if they were from tin. They look like they're from tin roofs or something. It's like the same material used to build the Citroen H van or something. That, like, because whenever I see the metal of those buses, first thing that comes to my mind is tin. So it's, you know, tin is not a very durable material or, or I'm not sure if it was tin, everyone, but whatever the material was, I'm certain it is a low quality material that was not durable enough to withstand years of abuse or years of usage because you have to consider these buses will be driving on public roads through the rain through the snow through the intense heat in the summer and everything so that's possible that could be a very good explanation as to why they uh vanished very quickly because of wear and tears and everything um they aged they dated very badly and if you look at other buses of that era the reason why buses especially from germany like mercedes and uh, the likes why they the reason why they survived longer is because of the materials they were built with the germans always built their buses with good materials that are appropriate for the standards of the buses in the 1950s 60s 70s you name it whereas whoever was responsible for designing this bus so in this case it would be surus these guys were intelligent when it came to design. They wanted something flamboyant. They didn't really think carefully about the material to use when building the body of the bus. Now let's get down to the detective part. Did I discover any survivor, any uh, Citroen U55 Citirama survivor? I'm going to tell you all something very interesting. Um, so uh, there are not many pictures of the survivors, but I did see some sources discussing about it. I would like to talk to you all about a survivor that was spotted with a circus group. <laughs> There's an interesting picture of a U55 City Rama uh, with a circus group. Now I studied the picture very carefully and I discovered that the circus group is called Sabine Hansi, because if you look at the side of the bus, it's written Hansi. And what I discovered about them is that they apparently had an obsession for Citroen U55 trucks. So uh, if you look at their, tr the trucks they use, they primarily use Citroen vehicles. So it doesn't come as a surprise that eventually they would include a Citirama U55 uh, in their uh, band of trucks, but then it's it then at this point it remains a mystery what has become of that bus that joined the circus group but what i do know is that the circus group stopped in the 2000s i believe somewhere in that era so i guess when they had to get rid of their assets the bus was also gotten rid of but then who to where to that will remain a mystery but what i do know is that uh, the circus group was called sabine Rossi and they prided themselves with fancy Citroen trucks. And when I say fancy, in fact, I remember they had some really interesting style to them. Something that would attract attention from other road users. Um, so it's very interesting, actually. It's just interesting designs, really fancy and very stylish. And also the fender skirt. Fender skirt is when the bodywork of the vehicle covers the rear wheel. Fender skirt. That's how we call it. But it does not end there, everyone. I spotted a very interesting image of a Citroen U55 Citirama on a car carrier. That was the moment I realized, yes, we have a little bit of a breakthrough. So if you look carefully at this image, you see what looks like the U55 Citirama on a truck carrier or a car carrier whichever it is everyone what i do know is that it looks as though it's parked on the side somewhere 
Um, it's not very much confirmed where it is. But there's some very interesting observations I've discovered. And these were the observations that led me to talk about the quality of the exterior earlier in this video. Let me talk to you all about something very important I discovered in this photo. What, I, what this led, photo led me to confirm is that first of all, there were more than two or three examples of the City Rama U55 buses. Uh, because if you look carefully at this photo, uh, most of the pictures we've seen of uh, City Rama buses in bad states have been in warehouses or at secured locations or in storage, somewhere where it's being looked after by someone. But if you look carefully at this photo, uh, this photo looks as if that this city Rama has been exposed to exterior uh, conditions. It has been parked outside somewhere for quite a while. And this is evident because if you look at the rear of the bus, it, first of all, the bus itself looks like it's been gutted out. So you, you see the seats are misplaced. You see half of the windows are missing. And also the rear of the bus has significant amount of rust, which strongly implies that it has been exposed to rain at one point. And also the reason why I say exterior is because if you study the front of the picture, the, the front of the bus in the picture, the windows look a bit foggy. It, it looks a bit uh, misty. And when that's the case, it means it has been in, uh, it's been at the exterior for quite a while. And this is also part of the dampness. This is part of the weathering process. Uh, that's, and this is a common sight when you see abandoned vehicles or abandoned cars that have been sitting at certain locations for a significant amount of time. And, but, but this picture was the picture that confirms that these buses were built of rather poor quality materials and which could explain why they died very quickly, why they lost public presence very quickly and never were uh, reserved to uh, be in a museum or something because they degraded so badly that nobody could restore those buses anymore. Like nobody would care to restore those buses. Nobody saw reasons to, do, to restore those buses because they were not of significance or anything. So I guess that explains why they vanished and why there is no survivor as of now. I was reading a forum that was discussing about this bus and the forum, one of the people in the forum mentioned something about one of these buses being in a museum. Now, apparently this person, I do not know the veracity of this information, but this person also claimed that uh, this bus was gifted to the museum by an American community living in that area. And uh, this museum was said to be in central France. So I Google mapped this museum and this museum is marked as permanently closed. So it remains a bit of a mystery what's going on here because this is a cluster of information at the same time. Uh, this museum closed and uh, the guy mentioned that the bus, that the museum had this bus, but no source was talking about this bus, no source of the museum was talking about this bus, but he did say that there was a source that told him uh, that it was gifted by an American community in living in central France. Now, I just wonder what was an American community living in France doing with that bus? So here's my conclusion of my investigation of the Citroën U55 City Rama bus. The investigation is still ongoing. We cannot conclude our investigation just yet. So we have to be Sherlock Holmes and continue searching. We must look at every single source as possible because this bus does not deserve to die from public just like this. This bus deserves to die peacefully and with honor. We need to honor this bus for opening our eyes to a new generation, everyone. We need buses and public transport and vehicles which are interesting to look at. Why have all the cars of today become so generic? Why? No, we need to change, everyone. We need to include something different. We need the bus to be found so that it will inspire today's generation and the generation to come to come up with more interesting vehicles for the road. As part of my conclusion, I can definitely confirm that this bus sure was beautiful, but it wasn't really smart in terms of architecture and engineering. Because you see, if you think of it scientifically speaking, the bus is like a greenhouse. In the summer, it would have been very difficult to 
tra be traveling in this as a passenger. So basically you had to have the windows open and everything, but back in France in the 1960s and 1970s and 80s, there was no such thing as air conditioning in a bus. So therefore even opening the windows would have not been enough. When building a bus, you need to have a durable material that needs to be used because these buses will be traveling from A to B on a regular basis and they will be exposed to outside climate, whether it's intense cold or whether it's intense heat, whether it's intense rain, whether it's intense humidity, they'll be exposed to all sorts of climates. You have to assume the worst. But Clearly, whoever designed and built this bus was over-invested in the style, but less invested in the physics and in the scientific perspective of things. So I looked at the bus at a scientific perspective and that was where all the problems were. And that explains why these buses vanished from public. So you want my opinion of the Citroën U55 City Roma? Oh, I love the U55 City Rama! In the automotive industry, we do not deserve to be seeing generic vehicles. We do not deserve just A to B machines that look like eco boxes just to satisfy safety laws and environmental initiatives. By all means, we must honor environmental initiatives and safety. It's crucial we find a survivor Citroen U55 City Rama, and it's crucial we restore it to present to today's generation and to the generation to come, to show that this is what we built before, but this does not mean it's over. This means we need to bring something again to the future. We need to bring something again to the present, everyone. We need to do something new. We need to make people motivated to use public transport, not just because of environmental initiatives, everyone. Because when you look at buses of today, they look like, yeah, they look good, they look interesting, but they also have a generic style to them. Nobody is attempting to do something groundbreaking. And, but this Citroen U55 City Rama, back in its days, was something groundbreaking. So, what I want to see is some change, everyone. I hope that there will be change very soon. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos that are on the run. And in the links in the description, I have some links of more interesting videos of my car reviews. I did the video of the Citroen U55 City Rama. And uh, yes, there are videos in the links in the description which could be of certain relevance.